since we're going to be talking about Italy today, I thought it would only be fitting to pop a bottle of Prosecco. Cheers. Salute. 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 <laughs> This is our extensive guide for traveling to Italy, things to know from planning to packing. I think it is safe to say that we're obsessed with Italy. We spent three weeks in Rome and Puglia region in 2022, then two weeks in Rome, Florence and Pisa in 2023. As a result, we have a ton of travel advice to share from our trips there. We've traveled by plane, train, rental car and bus. Here's our advice for traveling to Italy. Staying in hotels and B&Bs in Italy. Hotel staff and B&B hosts will make a copy of your passport or ask you to send them a picture of it. This is done for city tax purposes on their end and is totally normal, so don't worry about it. Beds tend to be tiny, like really tiny. Generally, beds are double size in US standards, and two twin beds being pushed together to make a double bed is pretty common. Air conditioning is not standard. If you're visiting Italy, especially during the summer, double and triple check your hotel or B&B before booking. Don't expect a dryer. Even if your B&B comes with a washer, you won't find a dryer, but there will be usually a clothing rack to line dry your clothes on. You'll need to pay a tourist tax in each city you visit and it must be paid in cash. This fee is set per person, per night, and is usually around 2 to 7 euros, though it depends on the city and accommodation type. For example, if you're a couple spending three nights in a city with a 3 euro tourist tax, you would owe 18 euros total for both of you. And again, this must be paid in cash, either checking in or out, depending on the establishment. These taxes are never paid before arrival, so even if you paid for your hotel via third-party websites before checking in, you'll still owe the tax. But don't worry, if you don't have cash on you at check-in, most places won't make a big deal out of you having to pay any time before checkout. If you have mobility issues, choose your accommodation carefully. Elevators are not guaranteed, and narrow, steep staircases are very, very common in Italy. Restaurant Tips First of all, avoid restaurants near major landmarks with servers waiting outside. They're usually tourist traps and every major city has them. You can expect subpar quality, small portion sizes, and higher prices. Since food is so regional, you'll eat well if you stick to the local cuisine, which means it's unlikely that you'll find excellent Neapolitan pizza in Rome. Also, don't expect the waiter to come and check on you every five minutes. We're so used to it in the US, even though I don't like it one single bit. But in many places in Europe, this is considered to be rude. They won't bother you while you're eating, so you'll have to get their attention when you're ready to pay your bill. Don't cut or use a spoon when eating pasta. It takes some practice to learn how to spin the noodles with a fork, but it's worth it. House wine is cheap and delicious and generally sold by the liter. You'll order half or one liter and you'll have the choice of red, vino rosso, or white, vino bianco. Just ask for the house wine or vino della casa. Tipping is not mandatory, but sometimes there is a cover charge called coperto, around 1 to 3 euros per person. Depending on the restaurant, you may have to pay a cover charge per person for table service. You won't pay a cover charge if you eat standing at the bar. Cappuccino is a breakfast drink. The Italian way of thinking is that too much milk is not great for digestion. Obviously, you can order it. We see a lot of tourists do. But if you're looking to blend in, stick to espresso after 11 a.m. By the way, espresso is just called coffee. So don't ask for an espresso. Just un caffè will do. If you see an American breakfast or simply an omelet on the menu, unfortunately, you're at a tourist restaurant. 
It doesn't mean it's not going to be good, but traditional Italian breakfast typically consists of coffee and maybe a pastry like a Cornetto eaten standing at the bar. I would highly recommend trying a pistachio cream filled Cornetto. It might change your life. Be specific about what kind of water you want. They will not bring free ice water to your table when you sit down. They will ask you if you want aqua naturale, which is flat, or aqua frizzante or gassata, which is sparkling water. They're generally the same price and will come in a bottle. Italian pizzas come in one size and are meant to be consumed by one person. We've lost track of how many pizzas we've eaten in Italy at this point. And let me tell you, you're not reading the menu wrong. Pizza in Italy is very cheap. Pizza served in pizzerias is eaten with a knife and fork rather than with your hands and won't come sliced. Sliced pizza served as a street food is more traditionally eaten by hand. Unlike the U.S., restaurants in Italy typically don't stay open all day, so you should check your restaurant hours when planning your day. Lunch is generally the biggest meal of the day, and it's between 12 and 3 p.m., depending on the restaurant. Aperitivo is a quick drink and some snacks before dinner, generally 5 and 7 p.m. Restaurants typically open for dinner at 7 to 7.30 p.m., and they'll really start to fill up around 8.30 to 9. If you want to eat a specific restaurant, especially in a big city like Rome, make reservations. If you couldn't make a reservation for some reason, our advice would be getting in line in front of the restaurant right when they open. We got into many restaurants like that just by waiting outside for 5 to 10 minutes at the opening. They let us in emphasizing that we'd have to leave the table in 90 minutes, which is usually more than enough time to enjoy a great meal. Living in the U.S., we're used to getting served with the bill before finishing our meals. In Italy, there is no rush. Slow service doesn't mean bad service. Take your time eating and enjoying your drinks. Then at the end of your meal, just let the waiter know you're ready to pay. Bringing the bill without you asking for it is considered to be rude. You can use the universal bill sign or just say il conto per favore. Your waiter will bring the POS machine to the table and run the card in front of you. In Italy and in Europe overall, it is considered a major no-no to even remove a credit card from the site of its owner. They don't even touch your card, actually. They hold the machine out for you, and you either insert or use the credit card's contactless option to pay for your bill. By the way, there also is no ad tip option. If you had great service and you really want to tip your waiter or waitress, you can leave a cash tip for around 10% of your bill if you'd like. If you want to experience some of the best gelato in Italy, you need to know where to go. Any gelato you're eating should not be piled up so high it resembles a mountain. Look for flat metal tins, which may have lids on them. Lids are always a good sign, as it shows the gelato is being carefully kept at the right temperatures, and that the gelateria is respected enough that it doesn't need to draw in customers with bright colors and fancy decorations. A quality gelato will never have very vibrant colors, but natural ones. For example, pistachio should never be bright green like you might think, but a more light brownish green. For berry colors, look for deep muted reds rather than shocking pink, and lemon should be white rather than yellowish. Skip the bottled water sold at tourist attractions and head for the local drinking fountains called Nazoni. Nazoni are an integral part of Rome's cultural heritage and the perfect way to stay hydrated while exploring Rome. And yes, it is perfectly safe and even encouraged for people to drink water out of the Nazoni as the water is drawn from the aqueducts, the same sources that provide potable water to houses throughout Rome all year round. You'll save money and produce less waste by drinking from the Nazoni instead of buying water in plastic bottles. Tips for grocery shopping in Italy. The most common market brands in Italy are Carrefour, Coop, Pem, and Conad. You'll find at least a couple of these in any given Italian city. Size varies dramatically, from super centers in the outskirts of the cities to tiny express marts 
that are barely more than a bodega. Don't forget to use plastic gloves when handling produce at the market. In the U.S., you'll bag your produce, and then it'll be weighed and scanned at the register. But in Italy, that's the shopper's job. You'll notice that each type of produce will be marked with a number. Go to the nearby scale, place your bag of produce on it, and press the respective number. Sometimes there are even pictures on the produce on the scale screen, which makes identifying the fruit easy. And then a sticker will automatically print with a barcode, weight, and price. You'll stick the sticker on the bag, and that's it. If the produce is prepackaged, you don't have to do anything. If you want a bottle of Italian wine, go to the grocery store. You'll find wine that would normally cost $20 a bottle in the U.S. or 4 to 6 euros in Italy. Plastic bags come with a small charge in Italy, typically around 15 cents. Living in California, we always bring our own grocery bags to the store, so we have a packable grocery bag that we carry in our backpacks at all times when we're traveling to Europe. That way, we don't have to waste a plastic bag or pay for it. Also, there's nobody to bag for you. That's your job, too. Purchase your tickets in advance. While some travelers think they can get tickets last minute for major attractions and stroll in without a queue, this rarely works out. Ironically, the secret to having a relaxed trip is being as organized as possible. One of the important things to remember when planning a trip to Italy is to buy tickets to all of the sites you want to visit well ahead of time. This could mean weeks or sometimes months in advance. When purchasing tickets in Italy, you'll have to book them for a specific date and time so you can plan your days in advance. This will also help you to save money as you'll be able to keep track of how much you spent on attractions. Budget tip. More than 430 museums, sites, and monuments throughout Italy are free on the first Sunday of the month during the usual public opening hours. We took advantage of this deal and visited a lot of museums, palaces, and parks all around Europe. Carry cash as well as a card. Visa and MasterCard are the most accepted credit cards in Italy. Nearly all Italian merchants accept both of these options. They often have minimum transaction limits, which means you have to use cash for smaller purchases, like a 3 euro gelato or 1 euro cornetto. Bathrooms are rarely free. 50 cents for a restroom is a good price. 1 euro is acceptable. More than that, find somewhere else. Make a habit of using the restroom in any places you visit that have one, like restaurants, coffee shops, and museums. Tips for driving. You need an international driving permit to rent a car in Italy. The rental car company may or may not ask you for it, but the last thing you want is to be pulled over by a police officer and not have one. International driving permits translate your license into local languages, and they must be a ranch or before your trip. We get ours from AAA for around $20. Italian roads, parking spaces, and vehicles are all much smaller than in the U.S., so try to rent the tiniest car you can fit your belongings into. You'll pay much less and have much more vehicle choice if you can drive a manual, but most car rental companies keep a few automatics on hand for international tourists. Getting gas at an Italian gas station. If the gas station is open and staffed, you can have someone pump your gas for you. Drive up to a servito or service pump and open your tank for the attendant. Tell the attendant how much gas you'd like. You can ask for it to be pieno, full, or tell the attendant how many euros you'd like to spend. For example, pieno per favore or 20 euro per favore. If you roll into the station during lunch, late at night, on a Sunday or a holiday, you might find the gas station is closed. Don't worry. Just look around for a self-service machine. The machines sometimes have an option to change the language. It'll say ENG or English, or have an icon of a British or American flag. Enter your cash, credit card, carta di credito, or debit card, Bancomat. You will need a pin for your debit card or credit card if you use one with it. 
Then choose your pump number on the screen and fill up your tank. Self-service machines usually don't give change, so don't put 50 euro bill in if you only need 20 euros of gas. Taxi travel tips. You can't hail a cab on the street. They're not allowed to stop just anywhere and they won't stop. To get a taxi in Italy, you either ask your hotel front desk to call you a taxi or you can call them yourself. You can also use an app or walk to the nearest taxi station. They're everywhere. The FreeNow app is like Uber for taxis and you can use a credit card to pay through the app. Train travel tips. Train Italia is Italy's national train company. They have the most routes and the best prices. Italo is a private company that operates some routes in the country, especially high-speed ones. I would recommend downloading the Train Italia and Italo apps. In Italy, you must validate your paper train ticket before you get on the train. When using the app, you can validate your electronic ticket on the app and the conductor will be able to easily scan your ticket from there. You can buy regional train tickets whenever you want, which are slower with multiple stops, and their prices are set by the government. For example, if you want to travel from Florence to Pisa on the regional train, you can simply show up at the train station, use one of the Trenitalia self-service kiosks, and buy your ticket that day. But if you wanted to take the high-speed train from Rome to Milan, booking in advance would get you the cheapest price. Kind of like a plane ticket, so it helps to plan ahead. Bus travel tips. An Italian tobaccaria or tobacco shop sells cigarettes, but also bus tickets, souvenirs, and snacks. This is important because not all Italian buses sell bus tickets. Before boarding a bus in Italy, it's best to always have a ticket in hand, and don't forget to validate it once you board. One time when we were in Florence, we needed to take the bus and we couldn't find a tobacco shop. So we got on the bus and asked the driver if we could buy tickets from him. It was six euros total, but we only had a five and 20. So the very kind driver gave us change from his own wallet and we got our tickets on the bus. So even if you risk to buy a ticket on the bus, make sure you have at least exact change on you. Tips for flying. Many budget airlines fly to airports just outside of major cities, so make sure you're going to the right airport and your connections are from the same airport. In our experience, Rome Fiumicino Airport is the best airport in all of Europe. It has the best food court, amazing restaurants, and a great atmosphere. Also, there is no liquid limit going through TSA. You can have a jug of water or 110 milliliter containers with you. You don't even have to put in a clear container. You also don't have to take your electronics out. Going through Rome Fiumicino Airport is a breeze, but have a transportation plan before leaving the airport. We wouldn't recommend it, but if you'll be taking a taxi, check to see the flat rate to get to the city center from the airport. There is one, and it's government regulated. But that won't always stop drivers from telling you that your hotel isn't in the city center, even if it is. Luggage can also add to the cost in a taxi. That's another thing to confirm with your taxi driver before getting into their vehicle. How to avoid common scams. Don't let anyone give you a friendship bracelet. Someone will approach you to offer you a free bracelet. They'll compliment you and be very nice until they tie the bracelet on you. As soon as it's tied to your wrist, it's not free anymore. And if you refuse to pay, they may get aggressive. Don't accept any flowers or roses. If someone hands you or your partner a flower, they will try to extort money from you for it. Sometimes they will literally put one in your hand as you walk by. Just don't touch it and walk away. I don't care what they say it's for, don't sign any petitions. This was very common in Paris and Lisbon too. Just pay attention, say no grazie, and keep walking. Keep an eye out for pickpockets. Busy train stations, crowded buses, metros, and touristic areas like the Colosseum 
are particularly packed with pickpockets. We like to keep our phones and wallets in our front-facing crossbody or waist bag at all times and keep no valuable items in our backpacks. If one of us is wearing a backpack, the other one will walk behind and keep an eye out or wear the backpack on our chest in those areas. The emergency number in Italy is 112, the equivalent of American 911. And before you head anywhere internationally, please take some time to save the phone number and the address of your country's nearest embassy. Packing for Italy. If you're planning to visit any churches, you must always cover your shoulders and your knees. Otherwise, they might not let you in, so bring a scarf or church-appropriate outfit. You'll need European travel adapters for Italy, and we recommend purchasing them before you arrive, but you can also find them at the grocery stores in Italy. One of the most important things to know about Italy is people are fashionable. They don't wear leggings or sweatpants to the grocery store. They wear pants, jeans, or something more put together. You won't see Italians walking around in flip-flops either. Beachwear and yoga pants also do not translate to streetwear. If you don't want to stick out as a tourist and want to blend in, consider these when packing. Strongly consider purchasing an eSIM card for Italy. We use Aerolo and usually get the regional Europe package, which allows travel all over Europe with one SIM card. There's no phone number attached to it, but you have the internet and everybody uses WhatsApp for calling and messaging in Europe anyways. I'll leave my Aerolo referral code for $3 off your first purchase in the description below. English is the international language of tourism, and that includes Italy. However, everyone in Italy does not speak English. You should absolutely learn at least a few basic Italian phrases before coming to Italy. Like, buongiorno. Good morning. Buonasera. Good evening. Ciao. Hello or goodbye. More casual, don't say it unless they say it first. Per favore. Please. Grazie. Thank you. Prego. You're welcome. Parli inglese? Do you speak English? Non parlo italiano. I don't speak Italian. Il conto, per favore. Check, please. If you want us to dive deeper and make another video about any of the topics we discussed, or if you missed something, please let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe.